Cisco ACI Cloud APIC. Fast, cheap, good. You can't have all three, so which is it? So traditionally, Cisco ACI has been a on-premises solution. It is your switching uh, management domain. It gives you security, it gives you policy, it gives it to you in a central uh, console, and it allows you to manage who can speak to whom within, traditionally, a data center. Now, there's been a lot of extensions and work done to this to take the scope of Cisco ACI from the data center into uh, other realms. And one of the recent announcements I heard Cisco talk about was the cloud APIC. If you're thinking about this as an on-premises solution and then hearing about a cloud APIC, what, what does that really mean? Well, in this context, we're talking about AWS uh, first and foremost, where you will deploy an APIC up into AWS. The big idea is that the cloud APIC is going to take the directives you'd normally give it to program policy, set your uh, EPGs and uh, and then convert those into cloud native constructs and then stand that up in the cloud. Therefore, you'll have within the cloud not some translation service or you know, nesting within a virtual switch to enforce policy. You'll be able to deal with AWS directly. You know, the idea is that you're going to uh, stand up an APIC first. Uh, there's a form you're going to fill out to do this, to get this thing running, and as soon as that initial cloud APIC has been deployed and it's, it's, it's stood up in uh, AWS, you're going to stand up a couple more of them to build a cluster, uh, jumping off of that initial cloud APIC that you installed, and then you'll now have your cluster. You can join that cluster to your centralized uh, APIC management domain and manage within AWS this, uh, this site, if you will, that's up in the cloud. The Cloud APIC cluster is going to handle whatever you need based on what you filled out in the form. Do you need some CSR 1000s? It will deploy those, uh, etc. And then, uh, with all of that done, it's doing a translation for you so that AWS native constructs are what's being used to control the traffic flows in and around the VPC or VPCs that are being set up. So, uh, let's go back to fast, cheap, and good. Is it going to be fast? Um, well, if you're using Cloud Native Construct, you should be able to get as much oomph out of the solution as AWS will allow. Now, one thing to understand about Cisco ACI and APIC is that traffic isn't traversing through the controller. This is, it's just a, the controller simply programs the forwarding plane. So it's not as if APIC is any sort of a bottleneck. Uh, so there's no slowdowns there. Um, I would be concerned if there ended up being a lot of VXLAN NCAPs and DCAPs, which traditionally there would be. Uh, yes, we're using some cloud-native um, constructs here to control traffic, but still, the way ACI works, there is VXLAN tunneling involved to connect all of these different endpoints together. So, uh, if I'm asking my... AWS VPC to run cloud service routers to do VXLAN NCAPs and DCAPs, uh, is that fast? Or, you know, I'm asking CPUs to do things, uh, so there's some latency there. Is that a bad thing? Well, you know, again, I'd want to see it in action and kind of see. For Depending on the workload, it may not matter at all. Certain other workloads, maybe it does. That's a thing to consider and profile. Remember, the original ACI big idea was doing all the magic in hardware, hardware VTEPs in your data center, uh, maximum efficiency as fast as possible. So putting all of that and dumping it in the cloud doesn't sound, it's not all going to be hardware accelerated, you know what I'm saying? So I worry about that. I worry about latency. I worry about just how fast it's going to be. Uh, cheap. Is it going to be cheap? <laughs> no. <laughs> It's not going to be cheap. I don't have pricing, okay? I don't have pricing in front of me. I don't know how expensive or what this is. I mean, but there's a, there's a couple of things to point out here. One, very likely you are heavily invested in Cisco ACI already. You've got APIC controls. You've got sites. And in fact, you're so invested in it that the whole reason you want to do this, uh, that is, put a uh, stand-up cloud APIC in AWS, is because you're trying to extend your operational model into cloud. You are that much a believer in how the operations model is working for you, the security, the auditing, the reporting, all of that. And that's fine. There's a, there's that, that makes sense. There are certain shops where that is absolutely perfect, and I'm sure there are people asking for this. 
but is it going to be cheap? Again, I mean, come on. This is not probably not going to be cheap. It's going to be expensive in a couple ways. One, I can think of this presumably licensing. Again, I don't have those any pricing in front of me. It's going to be a licensing cost. You're standing up an IPA cluster. Uh, you're adding it to a site. All of that has just got to be a, a complex licensing tiering scheme going on there, I am imagining. Um, and then two, uh, well, now you got to think about your AWS costs because now you're as asking for cloud service routers potentially, depending on what architecture is required, whatever the security, filtering, service chaining, etc. model that you built within your cloud instantiation of ACI. Uh, okay, Amazon doesn't give anything away for free, and you're running all this stuff in their cloud, you've added these features, what does that cost? I, I'm not suggesting it's necessarily going to be expensive, but it, it's a cost, there's something there that you're going to have to pay for. Is it going to be good? Cisco ACI has got a long track record at this point. The product's maturing. Uh, the early teething pains are gone. I've talked to several engineers who deploy Cisco ACI for a living and say, it's really gotten dramatically better. Most of the major bugs are gone. Um, now, we're coming up on ACI uh, 3.2 and now 4.0 uh, is where we're headed very soon. By the time you see this, 4.0 may have been announced or officially released on into GA. Okay, it's a Dotto release, new features including you know what we've just been talking about here. Is that going to introduce new bugs? Oh, probably. You know, that's that's a thing. But but again, going back to the fact that ACI is maturing and that code stability is being seen and it is functioning, certainly in the on-premises version, as you would expect, I am somewhat hopeful that a 4.0 release is not going to introduce piles and piles of new bugs. But the reality is there are so many new features being added here that I suspect there will be some impact to overall code quality as you deploy this thing. So. I would be very hesitant to do a to instantiate a cloud APIC cluster and start with your policy management and, and happily running your cloud workloads through this infrastructure. I would just be expecting there's going to be something, some kind of problem, something that needs to be sorted out. I don't know what, uh, but this is this is a this is big. You know, they're again they're taking. It's not simply a we packaged this software and moved it up to the cloud and we're running it uh, on AWS they're actually interacting with AWS cloud native constructs that is what is happening so fast cheap and good so I'll give you it, it could be fast uh, cheap probably not good I think eventually yes it's especially if you're committed to ACI already and the issue is less about how good it is and more about getting it to that stable code uh, that code release that everybody's happy with if you're a cutting edge person go for it if you must have ultimate stability eh, let somebody else work out that dot o release for you